Okay, I know I showed you these awesome fowls earlier, but I'm going to tell you how much they cost at the nursery. That was like a few, like a, a few paces <laughs> from my house. Each of these fowls only cost twelve ninety nine each. So, woo, so excited. Um, so these two only cost me about twenty eight dollars. So I'm really excited about that. And this is my fowl that is coming back. As you can hear, I have a humidifier going. This one's in semi water. And these two started tomorrow. I would definitely record it will be going into full water culture. As you can see with this, this guy is so big. It's still growing. I don't know if you can see it there. It's going to go some more buds. I'm really excited about that one. And this one, this one's very easy to tell. It's going to go some more. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited to do that. I definitely check the roots. I check the leaves before I when I was considering both of these beautiful babies. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so when we got home, this is what it said. They disconnected our cable, but we paid a bill today, so I don't know what the hell is going on right now. I'm hoping in a few hours it'll come back on, but it's been like this all day. I hate Frontier. I really do. So we made a payment and we still can't watch TV. Or have Wi-Fi for that matter. <sighs> so while I'm waiting for the cable to come back on, which I can always check on my tablet, um, I'm going to watch some DVDs. And there's a disc error. Don't understand it. I'll fix it in a minute. We'll see what's going on. Okay guys, I was hoping when I got up today that the cable would be on. It's not. It's still off. I don't understand it, but I'm about to go to my cable's website and see if that has changed any at all. Hopefully it has. So it says it takes two to three days for it to then for it to apply to the account. And I'm hoping at least the payment's gone through. Frontier's weird. Uh, we made the payment yesterday. It says it's pending. Schedule is pending. I don't understand the cable company. I really don't. So, going to go on the website like right now and see what's going. On. So I just went on the website and it says that they're trying to restore the service right now. It says it can. It usually takes 15 minutes, but it can up to take to about 24 hours. I'm like, great. So I can either wait 15 minutes or the whole day for the service to come back on. So that's, that's just great. So I'm out here getting the mail and then I'm going to go to the backyard and I'm going to show you guys how I do my trans <laughs> oh my god, coaching. transferring my orchids into water. Okay guys, this is how I make my tea. First, we open this compartment and I put a little coffee filter. And then I grab some tea bags and I put them in the filter. I usually it's about two for me. Between two and four. I'm gonna put in three. I'm gonna put in four. <laughs> I'm gonna put in four tea bags because I love nice hot tea. And then we're gonna put some water with our coffee maker, we have this right here that tells us how high the water is. I don't know if you guys can see it yet. Oops. That happens a lot for me. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see the water level, but it's right up to here right now. And I spilled water. That happens. Okay, so with my coffee maker, I gotta make sure it's on brew, and we just push on, and I like to wait till I start to hear it going, just so I know it's working. And what I do when I need to clean it is I clean it with vinegar. I have it run through with vinegar, and then I run it through with clean water about three times 
to get it nice and clean. I think I hear it. <laughs> I think I hear it. I think I hear it. It's a lovely sound to hear. Man. There it goes. Yay. So now I'm going to have Okay, guys, we're in my backyard, and I have this beautiful little fowl here. I'm going to show you guys how beautiful this guy is. It's It has a few buds on it, and it's trying to grow another bud. So I'm hopeful that when I'm transferring this guy to full water culture, we're going to try water culture first. I'm hopeful that nothing, no bud blasts. I've never tried this. With buds before so this is gonna be a first for me so what you are supposed to do, you're supposed to squeeze like that and gently pull out I'm trying really hard not to hurt any roots there we go and we can't use that because it has holes in the bottom so now what I'm going to do this is gonna be really fun isn't it I'm going to try to get this moss. It looks like moss to me. That's what it looks like. That looks like moss. Um, awesome. A dead root. Well, it looks like it still has some really good roots. I don't know if you guys can see those too well. But it looks like it has some good roots. It has good roots up here. So, oh, that one's dead. Yeah, I'm going to have to get my shears um, sterilized to do some cutting. Yeah, this guy. So I'm trying. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to squeeze and try to uh, get as much out as possible. But I've never worked with moss before, so I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, uh, this might take me a while to do to get all this out if I do it like this. I'm trying to pull, but I'm not trying to pull on the roots too much. Oh yeah, this is going to take me a while to do that. Because, oh my goodness. There's a lot in this guy. Oh my god. But he's so freaking beautiful. I love him. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and try... Hoping that if I rinse it with water, it'll come out better. I'm not too sure about that. But that is my plan for right now. So I'll be back when I get this guy out of this thing. Okay, so what I did is I was, I was out here. I was gently pulling them. I think it was moss. I don't know what the hell it was. But I was gently pulling it out. And then when I got most of it out, I went into the kitchen. I poured water all over the roots, not touching the crown. All of the roots and gently got most of that out. So now I'm going to show you how to sterilize your tools to cut the dead roots and I'll show you which one are dead roots and which one are healthy roots. So I have my shears right here soaking and rubbing alcohol and a flame which is going to be a little difficult because it's windy right now. So what I'm going to do first is I like to look for the bad roots. And it looks like this one's all the way to the top, which is not cool. I'm going to set him sideways. Their use, that's how they grow in the wild. They will grow sideways on trees and stuff. So I'm trying to get the excess off. I'm trying to flame it. <laughs> oh my god, I have it over here. I can't get the flame to go well. So we're just going to flame it right there. And then hopefully we're going to flame the other side. I was told you can do either or both. I just do both. Okay. So now we're going to find that root. Let's start with this guy right here because this one's dead. You can tell they're dead because they are very mushy right here. So I have to cut all the way to the base. So I'm gonna to try to show you guys how to do that. Oh my God. So I'm just cutting right to the base right there. Boom, it's gone. 
So then what you got to do is you have to go through every single root and feel all the way to the base so you know how far to cut if it is dead. So I'm just feeling all the way to the base on every single root. I have some new ones right here that I can't really get to right now. So I'm just feeling all the way. So I have to cut. Hmm. So I have to cut right about here because that's where the dead root is. So I'm just going to cut right above that area. And boom, it's gone. So now I can kind of feel these new roots that are coming out. They feel firm to me. And then this one, I have to cut all the way to the base. So this is what you got to do either if you're changing the media or, or you're going to full water culture, you don't have to check your roots every single time. The reason I love full water culture is that you can actually see your roots um, while they're in water, which is awesome. So if you need to snip a root immediately, you can. Oh my gosh. Some of these are difficult. I'm just going to say that right now. I'm trying to snip this right here. Some can be more difficult than others. There we go. I got that one. See, then it has like a little root coming out the side. That one's healthy. That's good. Okay. Up to this guy. I think it being in that moss so much has damaged it a lot. Ugh. See, it's dead right here. I'm going to go all the way up to the top. Yeah, it's, it's really dead up here. I'm actually going to cut it right here because it's so... That's how far the dead root goes. So I'm going to cut that right there. This is why I suggest you do it outside. Yeah, so you don't have all this mess in the house. That's why I'm doing it outside again. Oops, I missed some. Check it all the way up there. Like that. And then we're going to check this guy. This guy is dead. Oh my god. So I have cut this guy. I hate cutting roots, but... The good thing is, this guy has lots of new roots that are coming out. Oh my god, I've been outside too long. So what happens when I've been outside in the heat too long. We start getting the sniffles. It's just not cool. So we're going to check this guy up top first. And then I'm going to check the individual roots. This one's got to go right there. <clears throat> Usually you don't have to cut as many when you first get them, especially if you transfer them. <clears throat> immediately, but I was so tired yesterday that I didn't do that. Get that off there. I'm checking this guy. Looks like he has a lot of good roots. That's good. That's really, really good. So to make sure your roots are nice and healthy, if you press them, like I am, and they are nice and firm, then you get nothing to fear. So all my roots right now are nice and firm. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in the house and get its new container that it's going to be in now. Okay, so if you want to put your orchid in full water culture, I suggest a nice clear container. It doesn't have to be the container it came in. It could be any kind of container. I'm trying to see if you go in. That's always like the hard part is getting this guy to go in nicely where it's not going to fall over like that. Um, I might take some roots out to uh, make some room possibly. Wait a minute. I think I missed a dead root. I did miss a dead root. Good thing. My shears are still good to go. There we are. 
and miss a completely dead root. That happens too. You'll miss one. So now we are going to put this guy in. None of these were aerial roots, so they all have to go in like that. Ooh, this is like the hard part, getting it to go in without it tipping. Well, I have a stake in the house that I can stake it with. So that's going to be good. So I'm going to be real quick. I'm going to go get that stake. I also have a jar of clips right here. I like these better because they don't hurt the orchid too much. So what you want to do if you want to stake it, I have to stake it until it has more roots, is I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of the glass without trying to hurt any of the roots here. There we go. Oops. I have that upside down. And so again, we're going to go down to the base of the glass and we're going to get a clip. What I usually do is I clip it down toward the base like that and then I'll clip it again up near the flowers and that should hold it nice and steady. There we go. So now it's not going to be tipping everywhere. So we got this guy all set to go. I'm going to have to do this with my other one too because my other one's really top heavy. So I'm hoping none of these buds blast. That's my hope. And it has a new one growing, so hopefully those will grow too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this one aside and I'm going to show you the other one I'm going to do. I'm going to do this deck, the exact same thing to it. I should put my shears back in the rubbing alcohol. And I'll come back out and I'll show you the other one and I'll do the exact same thing to the other one. The other one's a little top heavy. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, here's this guy. This guy is top heavy. I'm not even kidding. I didn't realize it when I got him, but he leans over like that. So you had to sit in another container that I had from one of my previous orchids. So with this guy, these are huge. I don't know if you can tell, but they're big. And he has a bud right here. And behind this flower I'm trying to show you guys has one that's growing. So like before, I'm going to pull... Oh my god, this guy has so many has so many of these. I'm gonna gently do like this, like I did with the other one, and pull it out. I think this has the same moss. I think it's moss. So there we go. That came out nicely. So I already know I'm gonna have to cut some roots off of this guy. I knew that when I got it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this. Oh, it's really wet too. <laughs> it's really wet. Just pull gently and have most of it come out if a root comes out with it it was probably dead because strong ones seem to hold on a lot better so yeah your hands are gonna get dirty if you don't want your hands to get dirty i'm not too worried about it <laughs> if you don't want your hands to get dirty you should wear gloves when you do this but i'm not too worried about my hands getting dirty so it's not a big deal to me yeah, but if you are worried about that, I would suggest wearing gloves. So now I'm going to do this side. Just do like that. And woo, look at that. Most of it comes out just like that. But you definitely want to pull gently because you don't want to pull the roots out with it. So I'm going like very gently right now. Oh my god, there's a lot of dead roots on this guy. Okay. So now... So what he has left, but he has a lot of good roots too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sink and I'm going to rinse this guy off and see if I get any more of this moss stuff to come off of him. I want it gone. Okay, I went inside and I cleaned this guy and what I noticed is it has a lot of dead roots. So I'm going to take my shears out of the rubbing alcohol and we are going to go with these one by one like I did with the last one. And we're going to see how firm they are. These I was worried about because it has that right there. But they're still nice and firm. Which makes me really happy. This one's gone completely. So I need to 
cut it. Oh, I didn't cut it good enough. So we're going to try cutting it again. Yeah, some of these which are going to be tougher than others. That's just something you got to deal with. There it went. Yeah, nice dead. It's not a way to tell. <laughs> So this guy, that was under it, I'm worried about. Oh, there were some moss under it, too. Is it starting to turn a different color? I don't like that. At all. So now, I don't know what the hell that was. I'm going through these guys one by one. That's a dead root. There's, like, nothing to it, really. So we're going to cut that guy off. What you need to do is you need to get as close as you possibly can to the root without damaging the other roots. So just get as close as you possibly can. This guy's dead. So I look under sometimes to get a good view of where I need to cut it. Like that. This guy's good. Oh my god, this guy's completely dead. Completely dead. So I'm gonna go as close I can to get that guy out of there. Yeah, this guy's completely dead. There's nothing left in him. Okay, now I'm gonna do it this way. That one's nice and firm. Oh, that one's mushy at the top right there. So it's this guy right here that has these amazing roots, but once you go up to the top, it's very mushy. So I'm going to cut this guy away because a dead root is not serving the purpose of the orchid. So there we go. Bye bye. I'm so sorry. And this guy is definitely dead. I think this guy was sitting in water and it had that moss in it. So I think it was suffocating it. That's what I think was happening. There we go. Get that guy out of there. I was very close to this root, so I was really worried about that. So, checking the root. That guy's good. And then, we're going to check this guy. This guy worries me. Oh, he's good. This guy's. Those two are dead. But is it dead all the way to the top right there? So, we're going to cut it. Right about here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Because that's where the dead root goes. So we're just going to snip. Gone. That's dead. So it's just this guy right here. Oh my god. Especially when you have water and it like spits out all kinds of gross stuff. So. Again, if you don't want your hands to get dirty, wear gloves when you do this. But again, I'm not worried about it. Okay, so we got to cut it right about here. Because those are like three roots that are completely dead. Oh, good. Whoa. I just got water in my face. It's fun. Oh my god. Oh. So that one's nice and good. So again, I'm checking all of them. There's this one that's at the bottom that I'm just going to cut away. See that? It's really close to the one we have to do. There we go. Got it. It was just that. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's really dead. Alright, there's still got moss on this one. Yeah, I think since they were soaking it and it was in moss, I think it was suffocating the roots. It's so like, that's, a, that's why I think most of these are gone away. Alright, I think. I think I got one. Nope. I missed one. Looks like I missed a few. I gotta check this guy. So I'm gonna check this guy right here because it looks it's really bad. So this right there, right at the corner there, it's gotta go. I thought I had visitors. I thought I had Mr. Squirrel coming to join me. <laughs> okay, that one's good. Got 
that's good. That one's obviously dead. I swear, Mr. Squirrel friend. I think I see Mr. Lizard too. He's <laughs> on my brother's shed right now. Here we go. We got that one. That one was a goner. This is definitely a goner right here. So all of that right there is very thin. It's very dead. So we're going to cut that guy off. Yeah, I really think since they were soaking it and it was in moss, it was suffocating the roots here. And then I'm going to check all the way to the base. That's good. So I think that's it. I think that's where all the roots that are gone. So this is an aerial root, which is natural. This leaf right here is yellowing, which is natural. The bottom leaves usually yellow every couple of years, I think they said. So you don't want to pull them off. You want to just gently move them like I am and let them fall off on their own. So now we are going to see if this guy will fit into this glass or if he has to go somewhere else. I already have the stake in here because I know this guy is top heavy. So I'm sure you can hear my neighbor's dogs right now. I just don't know if he's going to fit. I might have to go to the vase I have in there right now. I don't know. Um, try. Mm. Because if I sit him like that. Yeah, I'm going to have to go get the vase. So I'm going to take this glass back in. I may have to wash it now. But I'm going to go get that vase because that vase is bigger. Okay, I was trying to save this vase for my orchid that's starting to get a comeback, but this guy is huge. So I'm going to try to get all these roots in that I can. Let's see if I can get that guy in there. And there we go. Those were already in the air. So since this guy is so freaking huge, I don't need to stake him. This is not tipping over, and there's some... And in a minute, I'll show you how to put him in full water culture, which is what I'm planning to do. Um, I'm going to put him in full water culture for one month. That's my limit for Phalaenopsis orchids because they are slow growers. So if they lose a lot of roots within the first month of four, uh, full water, I will switch them to semi-water. And if they don't like semi-water, I'll put them back in bark, which is something I don't want to do. So I'm hoping this guy, my two new fowls, well, there's squirrel friend. <laughs> right over there. Um, and my two new pals, hopefully, hopefully, they'll like either full water culture or semi-water culture. Because I don't want to put them back in bark. So now I, what I'm going to do, because I don't need that steak right now. I'm going to put all my tools away. And I'll be back to show you how to put them in water. If you've never done so before. They're so pretty. I love them. Oh my god. I love my orchids so much. Okay, guys. So if you're doing water culture and you don't get rainwater at your wherever you live, um you can't I wouldn't suggest using tap water because you have to test the tap the hardness of it. So what's been easiest is for me is just going to the store and getting distilled water. That's the water you should get if you're gonna buy water. Um at my store, it costs about 89 cents for a gallon, so that's not too bad. So when you're doing this, what I suggest, this is my method on how I put water in this guy. So first, I'm going to tell you how much, when you're doing full water culture, it's the same for full water culture and semi-water culture, how high the water has to be for the roots. The roots should be one-third in water, and the rest will be in air. So we're going to take this guy out. This is what I do. I just pour a little in the bottom here just like that and there was a moth in there and then we're going to put this guy back in like like that just checking on something just like that like that he looks good 
but it's not enough water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them back out and I'm going to put some more water in it. That's just what I do. I just take it out. I put a little more in there. And then I put them back in and we see how high the water level is. So now I'm going to get down eye level. And that looks pretty good to me. I think it looks good. Hang on. Let me raise the glass here. Yeah, that looks good to me. It's about one third of the roots that I have right now. So we're going to put him in here. I'm going to mark on my calendar next month to see if this guy likes full water or not. So I'll be back with my purple fowl to do the exact same thing. Okay, I have my purple fowl right here. I'm going to do the exact same thing. But since it's in a smaller glass, it shouldn't take too much water. So I'm going to pull it out with the stake I pull from the base. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a little bit of water in it. And then I'm going to set this guy right back down. Trying not to hurt the roots with the stake. And then I'm going to look. And that looks just right to me. So you want your roots one third in water and the rest in air. So that's about one third of the roots right there. So I'm going to put this guy back on the shelf. Looks so pretty. Um, and we'll see within the next month. Again, I'm going to mark it down on my calendar to check and see if they like full water or not. Um, every orchid is different. It's not just the same breed of orchid will like the same water culture method. It doesn't work like that. Um, I had two, I have three orchids. I had three. I lost two of them um, because I wasn't listening to them. So I lost two of them, unfortunately. But these guys, I know the signs, if it starts losing a lot of roots um, by the by next month on this day, um, I will move them to semi. I have one that loves semi water culture right now. And it's coming it's starting to grow a lot of roots, and I'll be back to show you how that guy looks. Okay, here's this little fowl right here. It has a root here, and it has a root right here. I think this is going to be another root, and I think this one right here will be another root. So I think I'm going to have a total of four roots by Tuesday, and this is the glass it goes in because it's so small, and it fits nicely like there. And I just fill it up to about this lowest um, flower spike. Because I don't want it to go any higher than the flower spikes. So that's how high I like it. And it does, this long root right here does touch the water. Well, just about the tip touches the water. So I'm not going to put it in water culture because it's today is Wednesday. This will go in water culture over the weekend, which is going to be Saturday and Sunday. Which on midnight which is Saturday morning, I put it in water, and it stays in water till midnight Monday morning. So, that's my little orchid, and that's how I transfer my orchids into water culture. I bought them yesterday, I did them today. I would have done them yesterday, but I was so tired. <laughs> so that's how I do it, and I hope you liked watching me do this for you guys.